Our first presenter is Brendan Bain. He's a UCSC alum and a science journalist who reports on environmental news, biology, natural history, and ecology. Sexy. <laughs> it is. His hobbies include reading, writing, and talking about science, and practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu all at the same time, I believe. <laughs> Scary. Well, he's here tonight to discuss the research he did while studying abroad in Costa Rica, and I guarantee you're going to enjoy this. Brendan? Oh my gosh, you're right there. Thank you. Hi. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Is this good? Yeah? yeah. Hear me? Okay, I'm set. I'm here to talk about making it. Now, that can be interpreted in a number of different ways. You know, some people will think of uh, the creative process, others goals, ambitions, but tonight I want to take a slightly different approach and I want to discuss two subjects that people usually prefer to keep separate, and those are romance and tarantulas. <laughs> I'm going to discuss courtship behavior in organisms from the family Theraphosidae, or in other words, I'm going to talk about how tarantulas talk about having sex, but rest assured this isn't going to be a dense science lecture. Instead, I'm going to tell you a story and it'll entail exotic jungles, fatal attraction, and of course, giant hairy spiders. Yeah, that's me. Uh, the story begins with my obsession with tarantulas. When I was in kindergarten, my principal had a pet tarantula, and ever since I was tall enough to like, stand on my tiptoes and peer into this thing's terrarium, I would do that for hours. I became obsessed. Favorite animal, sort of like my totem animal. And so, fast forward about 20 years uh, to when I transferred to the University of California, Santa Cruz to study ecology and evolutionary biology. And as I studied evolution, all of these new questions and interests popped up in my mind, and I became particularly curious about how tarantulas communicate their romantic intentions. So during my last quarter at the university, I took that interest, that question, and I brought it with me to Costa Rica to study ecology. Uh, and it was there that I held these crazy scorpions, I milked some cows, and I swam with sea turtles, and I got horribly sunburnt. But <laughs> What I came for was the tarantulas. You see, I'd, I'd grown up with these things and I, I looked through all of these images and I had this sort of picturesque image of, in my mind of what it would look like when I would find a tarantula in, in Costa Rica. And so, you can't see the picture, but <laughs> there's like beautiful leaf litter and these jungle vines over this tree and this tarantula is situated there in this sort of like picturesque fashion. And so I had this search image in my mind and that's what I looked for. We went on all these field trips, weeks and weeks went by and I found nothing. That was until late one night when I was walking along the unpaved roads of this tourist town that I found this, this sort of like crappy black scraggly tarantula. Uh, and I knew this guy was a male because when tarantulas sexually mature, the two sexes adopt two different reproductive strategies. The females stay in their burrows all the time while the males rove in search of females. Sometimes they stop eating and all they do is just wander. And so I had this male and I thought, the female can't be far. So I turned to this roadside embankment, which was basically like this dirt mound between a bus stop and some garbage, and there were holes in there. And I looked inside the holes, and there were female tarantulas. So I had a male, I had a female, and I thought in that moment, like, I'm gonna make science. So I, I, I took this male tarantula, I put him at the entrance of the burrow, and what I saw next was amazing. He started to like sway his tarantula hips, and he started to like tap his tarantula feet, and he started to like vibrate his tarantula body. And it was then in that moment that I was watching this that I formed the question that would guide my research. And that was, uh, this species of tarantula, Sferabothria hoffmani, do their courtship rituals vary? Do they always do the same thing, or do they have like unique uh, rituals or, or multiple rituals? Rituals. And so uh, it's kind of analogous to guys in pickup lines. Does like every guy always have the same pickup line? Or does he have like his own unique pickup line or a bunch of pickup lines? And so with that question, I got started on my research and I captured as many tarantulas that I could. And I brought them back to the lab and I set them up in these cushy terrariums and I paired them off one by one and I video recorded all of the courtship uh, rituals. And I started to analyze it. And as I watched, I noticed there were behaviors that would repeat again and again. And I'm gonna show you that footage right now, those behaviors, so prepare yourself for high definition tarantula pornography. Okay, so here, you've got this male approaching the female, and then they sway their bodies. And this one's easy to miss, watch, they pulse. Pulse, they pulse their body, and this last behavior, honestly, is a lot like twerking. They sort of, <laughs> like, convulse their bodies in close, and then they, boom, they throw their butts back like that. As I watched more of these behaviors, I noticed that they occurred in a particular sequence. And I'm gonna show you that sequence right now. So he approaches, 
and then he starts to pulse, and he sways the entire time, always swaying. And then he peppers in a few more pulses, and then he finishes with his little tarantula twerk movement. Uh, and so I started to analyze these dances statistically, and I found that pretty much every tarantula <laughs> has just one courtship routine, like one dance routine. And, uh, and then as I, but as I, when I compared dances among males, I found that each male has his own little variation dance, like his own unique dance. It's almost as if um, they all use basically the same pickup line, but with slight variations. It's almost as if tarantula number one may say to every lady tarantula that he meets, hey girl, if you were a fruit, you'd be a fine apple. But then tarantula number two may say, hey girl, if you were a fruit, you'd be an apricot. So it's like the same pickup line, same dance. That's bad, but like slight, <laughs> slight variation. Uh, and so you've got to ask after that, like, why the overall uniformity? Why the similarity among dances? And in order to answer that question, you've got to think about what it's like to perceive the world through the eyes and the hairs of a tarantula. You see, tarantulas have hairs all over their bodies, and they use those to interpret a world of vibratory signals that come from outside the burrow in. Sometimes those signals are food, sometimes they're males. This is a male's leg who approached a female without dancing. So it's imperative that a male identify himself as a prospective mate and not food. But there are also adjacent burrows that belong to other species of tarantula. So the male has to identify himself as not food, as a male, as a worthwhile mate, and the correct species. And this is kind of like a, a, a common theme in animal courtship. You can see crocodiles blow bubbles, birds of paradise have these elaborate courtship displays, hooded seals inflate their nasal, nasal cavities, and tarantulas dance and drum. And at, its, at their core, these behaviors are about sending the right signal. They're often species specific and they often contain information about the individual male. And so I, I finished up my project, <laughs> it's bad, uh, and, uh, and I realized something a little bit like bigger than myself about these tarantulas. Um, and that brings me to my final point that I want to leave you with is that we often tend to speak about nature in terms of its monetary value, like what it can do for us. And that's fine, it's good to have multiple perspectives, but it's also important to recognize um, that land, plants, animals are worthwhile simply because they're interesting and because they can inspire curiosity, reflection, and that's that's enough, that's worth, that's worth our protection and our consideration. And sometimes all you have to do is you just have to go out and maybe watch some bugs having sex. So I encourage you, go out and embrace nature. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Brendan Bain. That was fantastic. I predict that the twerking tarantula is going to be the number one Halloween costume in Santa Cruz. Who's with me?